We've all seen these cooling tower shapes. Now, if you look closely at some similar structures in architecture, you can see they're made out of sticks, essentially. They call this a ruled surface. So I made a little model with plastic rings for a ring toss game and then simple dowel rods from a craft store and rubber bands. When you twist these sticks that are straight lines connecting the two rings you get this hyperboloid structure that's what they call it looks like a little parabola there doesn't it so how can we code this well it's a good exercise we can just start with how to make simple circles we're going to make two of them eventually and then connect it with lines but let's just use some drag and drop coding i'm using scratch and use a simple sign function to make a circle. And the simplest way to think of it is two sine waves. We'll just make the cat move up and down or side to side. So let's start with side to side and moving in the wave function of a sine wave back and forth. And later we're going to do the same thing with up and down. You put it together and you're going to have a circle. And from there we can build the whole beautiful hyperboloid structure. Simple way to think about a circle. Back and forth with the sine wave and then we're going to do up and down. Just copy the whole thing in separate sprite. And one cat moving cosine function, which is basically just a sine, and the other, you know, if it's not the x, it's the y. So we have the x as the cosine, and then the y as the sine. It looks like they're circling each other, they're actually moving up and down. We'll make another sprite to do the pen, and the pen's just going to follow the motion of the two cats. Uh, the two sine functions time cosine actually so it's going to match the x coordinate of the cat that's moving sideways to the x axis back and forth and it's going to match the y of the other cat that's moving up and down with the y you put it together like that and you've got a circle now we can use the pen to draw the circle to trace out where you see the sprite, this little circle moving back, you know, around and around. We can just get the pen function and put the pen down. And it draws out the circle. Now, some interesting things about this little function of the slight variation you can create an alternate shape like this it's a little digression but this is it's got a fancy name but basically it's just doubling the speed of the x motion relative to the y or tripling it and then you get three nodes instead of the two when you double it you get two triple it you've got the they call it lizard juice figures okay back to the circle now we did it as two separate cats one moving x one moving y but of course you can set the x and y together with just one sprite which is what we've done now so I've deleted all the old sprites and I'm just going to do a cosine function and we multiply the cosine of the timer times 100. And then with the y, we'll use the sine function. And it's the sine of the timer. And the timer, we scale it up to 100 by 100. So it doesn't move too slow. And multiplying the whole thing by 100 like this, the x and the y, that's equivalent to the radius that is the radius of the circle. 
So with scratch blocks here, we trace out a circle with one sprite. We pull up the green flag so that when you click the green flag, the cat automatically moves over the timer to the sine and cosine. The timer is you know, increasing like a clock, so it's like increasing the angle. Now we can put down the pen. I give it a little delay before I put down the pen. So I'm sure it's already moving in a circle when the pen goes down to draw. And now we can shift the whole circle over to the right or to the left by adding this plus at the beginning. So where it says go to X, it'll go to say 100 and then it moves it over to the right plus the circle function. So it's shifted over by 100. See now we can put a, we can duplicate the whole thing and make another circle, but instead of plus 100, it'll be minus. So we can draw one circle to the left and one to the right. Now we can connect those two circles with little lines. And it's going to look a lot like, hopefully, like a cylinder of sticks. So it's a start. Now we don't need those repeats. Instead, we can just use a forever loop for now. And in fact, we don't want the pen to always be up. We want it to only draw between the circles. See, now we have a line, straight lines from the left circle to the right circle. Pen goes down at certain intervals. And we can make um, a certain number of sticks. So have it repeat a certain number of times, which we can specify. We can specify that with a variable that we call, say, sticks. So repeat sticks times and then have the stick 10, 20, 30, whatever, hundreds. And it should draw. Then we turn 360 divided by sticks. That's the angle we're going to turn. 360 would be a full turn and we want a fraction of that. So we want 360 divided by sticks. That's the turn. After which we draw a stick. It's the turn between sticks. Remember our aim is to make sticks go, lines go, from one circle to the other. There's a distance between the sticks we can think of as a turn uh, a few degrees. So let's actually turn our sprite and use that direction as the point where we're going to draw the line. Use the direction as where we're going to use the sine and cosine. So the direction after a turn, then it draws a line and then it turns again, draws another line. Depending on how many sticks we have, we'll have more lines and with more lines, smaller angle between the sticks. Now you know how to make a cylinder. Next thing we're going to do is just create a block, a block of code that's going to happen very quickly. So instead of drawing the line slowly, they'll draw them very quickly and without a screen refresh between. So we go to blocks, <coughs> the red section, and we'll create a block, call it something like draw cylinder and make sure you check this box where it says do not refresh between do not refresh screen and see there i would pause the video here and just see where i put all the commands under the define block and i dragged over the little command block and then you can put a forever loop around that little draw cylinder block so it'll draw very quickly over and over and then drag the erase right before the draw cylinder block so it redraws forever the cylinder so you can change the number of sticks and it'll immediately redraw 
the cylinder over and over and over so you can adjust variables in real time and it immediately responds to that so now we can add color so change color we're going under pen commands change color to a very small amount now it so happens I think there's 200 um, in one or 202 colors or it's 101 colors so that if I make this uh, 100 and uh, say 202 divided by the number of sticks then it should come out to be um, stable experiment with this I'm gonna make it so that the color is stable and it draws the full rainbow of, of colors it's a number of sticks colors going through the rainbow now instead of having the sticks go over straight we want a displacement uh, I think I'll just call it extension we'll create a variable called extension and add that to the second circle angle so that the second circle receives the line at a little bit more than the angle that the first circle is at so it will displace it the sticks uh, even amount forward see that's what happens that's the shape we're going for so it's essentially just twisting the cylinder that's what we did with our model you're twisting the cylinder these are straight sticks it gives a curved effect but the sticks are all straight they call that a ruled surface here I connected the sticks remember with rubber bands so it starts straight and then when you twist it you're displacing the angle of the second circle anyway it's just basically twisting the whole thing so that the sticks are at an angle and then you have this curved hyperboloid they call it a circular hyperboloid that's the shape we're after we succeeded in making it with sticks and with code so far you know, ruled surface because it's just a term for straight lines laid all across the surface and yet it looks curved and we get the same effect here we can change what I'm calling extension really I should call that stick angle it's the extra angle you get with a twist I'm gonna rename that variable from extension to stick angle makes more sense intuitive so we can go from straight to any stick angle so zero angle and then the original straight angle to any angle we want we can add a slider variable to change the length of this cylinder or hyperboloid so let's create a variable we could call something like x x position and then put it in there actually we want a negative x and a positive x so we'll just multiply times negative one and the other one will be positive so just x and then negative x x times negative one and add that to the beginning so now we can stretch it out we want to also be able to adjust the radius so let's create a variable radius make it a slider so we can adjust the thickness of the cylinder the radius put that in here where we just had a number typed in now we can change the radius of one side or both sides now we've got the radius adjustable so we can make it thicker and different lengths different thicknesses 
Now one thing that looks a little odd is to have a full circle at the beginning and at the end. Instead it would be turned, wouldn't it? So that's a matter of dividing the radius to make it a little bit smaller. Create a variable like turn angle or rotate circle like we did and then divide the radius of the X since that's going to be skinnier when it turns divide the the radius of the X coordinates of both circles so if it's zero then it doesn't even it just looks like a rectangle and if it's turned completely then it's going to be a full circle but really it doesn't even make sense to have it as a full circle we want a little fraction there move it down yeah so now it looks better see the radius is smaller on the X than for the Y so that's one way to quickly rotate it this way so now it looks more like what we see in our stick model and in architecture and so on we added the colors just to clarify where separate sticks were you wouldn't need to having a black background I think will make these colors stand out so we just go to background and add a big black rectangle yeah. Yeah, now we can change the shape freely with our sliders. Let's add a simple yes-no variable for making the color change over time. So what we could do, I th think, is just have a 0 or a 1 variable and make the 1 added to the to the color section here we have um, well we had 202 really it should be 101 I think yeah 101 as the colors and then we can add to that 1 or 0 so if it's 0 then it'll just stay the same and then if it's 1 it just adds a little shift to the color and then over time it's going to shift the color you have to play around with it let's just try that so add the plus and then add this variable for change color zero or one so the range is just those two and then add that here to the to the color numerator so instead of a hundred and one it's a hundred one plus zero or plus one see if it's plus one it just shifts it a little bit over time every time it redraws it it's shifting it forward since there's 101 colors should be 100 shouldn't there but there's 101 I discovered and now we have a model a stick and a coding model of some real architectural structures like cooling towers and so on didn't you ever look at those cooling towers and wonder how they got the shape well you can actually get it as you see in these fancier towers with sticks straight sticks that's what we learned by creating a model with code and with real sticks